What's up, people? It's your girl, Adola. I know I do talk a lot about politics, but I realize that majority of our problems in Nigeria are actually not caused by politicians, but the mindset of the common people. I found out that Nigerian hospitals are not only ill-equipped, but so many of our medical practitioners, our doctors and nurses, many of them have no regard for human lives. Again, some, not all. I have come across Nigerian doctors and nurses that genuinely care for their patients. I have many of them as friends, but I've also come across those that would not treat a dying patient unless money is settled. Many people argue that this is as a result of people who were treated and ran away without paying. I understand that, but that's not an excuse in a situation where the patient is obviously dying. Now, this story I'm about to tell you is a typical example of something that happens every day in Nigeria. We only hear about a few, but this happens every day. By now, you've probably heard about the students of Yabatek protesting the death of a fellow student. That is Dazan Charity Oluwa Bukola, a 27-year-old final year student studying office technology management at Yabatek in Lagos. So there has been several reports that she had sickle cell, but several students have disputed this. They denied it. So this account I'm about to give you is the account of her friends who were with her till her last moment. It was on Tuesday when Dazan finished her French shorthand practical examination around two in the afternoon, and then she fell sick. But getting to the school clinic, all they gave her after waiting for hours, all they gave her was paracetamol. That's like ibuprofen, pain reliever, you know, in case you're not familiar with paracetamol. According to her friends who took her back to her hostel, the clinic didn't allow her to go beyond the lobby. Now, when the girl got back to the hostel, she was complaining to her friends that not only was she really, really tired, but that she was having pains in both hands. Clearly, something was going on with the girl, right? Now, she got back to her room around seven, but by eight o'clock, when she kept complaining, her friends took her back to the school clinic and Again, they just checked her and gave her some drugs and then sent her back to her hostel. Her friends were trying to convince the clinic to admit her into the sick ward. Apparently, they have a sick ward where they could admit people, but for the second time, this girl was restricted to the lobby, which tells me that they didn't really do any major tests if she was attended to at the lobby. Now, it's already around 10 p.m. when the clinic told her to go back to her hostel and her friend said that by this time she could neither stand nor walk, yet the clinic did not admit her. Instead, they drove her to her room in their ambulance, which is this bus. They drove her back to her room and left her there. By 11 p.m. though, the girl started complaining again, this time bitterly, that she was not okay. So for the third time, her friends, by the way, God bless those friends, her friends took her back to the clinic and that was when the clinic decided to refer her to the Federal Medical Center in Ibuti Meta. So they drove her in their bus, this ambulance, uh, with a letter from the chief doctor at the school clinic. But get into the federal hospital, federal hospital, my people. The doctors there said they would not attend to the Zan until her friends pay a 35,000 Naira admission fee, coupled with other registration fees, everything amounting to 43,000 Naira. That's about $215. So these students begged the hospital to please start treating this girl while they run around looking for the money. But do you know that the doctors refused? And not only did they refuse, but they told the students, you can't leave her here. Take her along with you on your fundraising hustle. I, when I read that, I broke down. I, I wanted to cry. I was like, how could you? So the students had to carry her along with them as they drove back to their school to raise money. The chief doctor at their school gave them 10,000 naira. The Zan's Christian Fellowship, CNS Fellowship, raised 25,000 naira among themselves, and her roommates raised 3,000 naira, making 38,000 naira. So they went back to this federal hospital, accompanied by a nurse from their school clinic, and you would think that by now they would start treating this girl immediately at the federal hospital, but no, no. They insisted that the students must follow due procedure of paying the fees. Keep in mind, this is the middle of the night, and the doctors insisted that they should go to the cashier's office to make all the payments, to get her registered, get her a card, put in all her information and all that. That's another 600 naira, by the way, to get her a card. So they said they had to come back with the receipt, that they had to see the receipt before they would start treating her. Now, by that time, the Zan was saying, but faintly, she kept saying, I'm dying, please help me. I'm dying, please help me. I think that this is the most difficult part of that story for me, the fact that she kept saying that. And the doctor that was supposed to treat her said that she should shut up. 
So the students divided themselves into two groups. A group of them went to pay the admission fee of 35,000 naira, and then the second group went to pay for the drip and blood. Those doctors knew that she needed blood. That's why they were charging for blood before even treating her. But they didn't give it to her. They didn't give her blood. They wanted her friends to pay first. But when the students came back from making all the payments around two in the morning, the doctors said, well, they ran some tests on her. They said there was no single drop of blood left in her body and that they couldn't locate her veins. So there was no way for them to pass any water or blood into her bloodstream. After giving this report, they declared that Dazan had passed away. By the way, the hospital said that they would not refund the money that the students raised, except the 600 naira that they paid for hospital card. They also refused to issue her a death certificate. I mean, she was nobody, right? She wasn't the daughter of a governor or senator or a big businessman. They refused to issue her death certificate because she didn't spend up to 24 hours at their facility. So the students drove her dead body back to campus I don't even need to talk about the fact that the hospital on campus left her body in their ambulance overnight. By morning time, flies had surrounded the bus because she defecated at the last minute and they left her in her mess. They didn't clean her up. By the way, Dazan was an only child of her parents. The father is not feeling well. The mom is also sick. So needless to say, the students protested, especially because they each pay 3,000 naira for medical fees every year. I just had to talk about this story because it tells a lot about us as a people, the attitude of those in any position of authority in Nigeria. And I'm not talking about politicians right now, but I do realize that once Nigerians are in some kind of position to help others, even little things, we like to act as if we are gods. It's about time that we change our mindset. This is not how it's done in so many other parts of the world. Teachers treat their students in Nigeria as if you're doing them a favor. They paid to enroll at these schools. Not be so, yet you fail them like no man's business just because you can just because they didn't buy your handout i remember a professor of mine called me one day uh, she just wanted to see how i was doing this was years after college and a friend of mine that just came from nigeria was there and he was shocked that my professor called me he was like that was your professor your professor called you? It's not a big deal here in America. We grade our professor's performances in America. You go to some ministries in Nigeria, the secretary will keep you waiting for hours before telling the Oga you came to see that you are around. And even after Oga says you can come in, the secretary will just sit there for minutes before letting you know. Some bankers in Nigeria will see people lined up and they will be chatting as if you are invisible. And then the way they will talk to you when they're attending to you makes you wonder why you are banking with them in the first place. At the airports, custom officers have delayed me simply because I refuse to give them a gunje bribe. Why are we like that in Nigeria? Even in churches, instead of taking care of the poor among us, we're busy building new buildings, new auditoriums. Most universities built by Nigerian churches are not affordable for the common people. And many of them are church members. To be honest, Nigeria can never really maximize its potentials until we, the people, change our attitude and our mindset to accept that whatever responsibility we've been given it's a privilege to see what we can do to change lives. Having said that, there are people who have regards for human lives. There are people who don't look down on others just because of their financial status or dressing. There are really nice Nigerians. But you know those that I'm talking about. If we want Nigeria to change, let the change begin with us. So as for the Zan, may her soul rest in peace, but I really hope this will be an end to such instances. Who knows how many more students have died this way. I saw the mission statement of the clinic and I was just shaking my head that, wow, there are so many Nigerian schools like that that the school clinic is useless, completely useless, yet they charge these students ridiculous amount of money every year. But you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.